to the moon are, uh, we're literally the tip of the arrow. Uh, uh, the strength behind the bow in meeting the challenge of Kennedy a half a century ago are really the better than half a million people who were committed to do what most people thought was impossible, which couldn't be done. And it's the same thing. I, I know nothing about filmmaking, but I now appreciate, Mark, the team that you put together, uh, the people you mentioned, and I'm not going to try and mention them all. Uh, they are real pros. And, and I'll go back to what I said in the movie, uh, or maybe should have said it. My dad, my dad always used to say, if you're going to do it, do it right the first time or not at all. And your guys are real pros. And I kept thinking, why am I up here at 6 o'clock in the morning walking up and down the same path and doing it again? <laughs> you got to do it again. You got cordons wrinkling in your pocket. And, uh, I said, where are we headed? And let me tell you, if it wasn't for those guys, uh, we wouldn't be here tonight. They did a, just a tremendous job. And I, and I want to thank everybody involved. And you mentioned the archives. I saw things in that movie tonight than I have never seen before. I mean, I saw pictures and heard things. Uh, it, it was just amazing and brought back a, a lot of memories and added a lot to those uh, to those memories. And I want to give you a little a little history of uh, where this started. Mark came up to me. I got here in the here in the UK somewhere. I was here for some four or five years ago. Seven. Seven. Okay. <laughs> Mark, Mark happened to have read my book, and uh, and I had some good vibes on it. People liked it. I didn't want it to be a space book. I didn't want it to be a technical book. I wanted it to be me to you, answering the questions I think most of you have. And Mark got impassioned with the book. He said, "Gene," he said, "he said I want to make a movie out of this book." I said, "Sure." You know, I can come around next month and give me another. You know, everybody wants to do something. Everybody wants to get on board. And I didn't know Mark from Adam. He stayed with that theme. He said, Gene, it's a story. It's a story. We have to tell your story so that kids, another generation down the line, can know what they can accomplish based upon what you were able to do in your lifetime. And you know what, Mark? We never deter from that theme of yours. We never change. And it, it took me a long time. And it was maybe recent uh, six eight months ago that someone who I respected who knows something about making movies said and I asked him about it because I was reticent who's going to carry carry a care about a movie about me he said Gene I don't want to hurt your feelings but it's not about you <laughs> it's the story it's the story of a young kid back in World War II who had a dream of flying airplanes off aircraft carriers it doesn't make any difference what his name was. And that dream, a, a young kid uh, uh, with immigrant grandparents, spent a lot of time on the farm in Wisconsin, as you saw in that movie, uh, you know, in, in a really rustic world. Uh, grew, was born in Chicago, blue-collar parents who never had a chance to get to education, and they dreamed about him getting, uh, lived a dream about flying airplanes and never applied for this big program as it came around that time because I wasn't qualified. Uh, so I didn't apply, I didn't meet all the requirements, still was selected, uh, but one of the youngest guy, youngest American ever find this time when I flew in Gemini 9. And by the way, let me share this with you. At this moment, 46 years ago, June 4th, uh, I was orbiting this Earth on Gemini 9, we launched, someone reminded me of that today, we launched yesterday, and tomorrow I made that almost three hour space walk from hell, because I titled a chapter in my book, uh, Space Walk from Hell, on the 5th of June, 46 years ago tomorrow. How's that for time? But I guess what I'm saying, and I mentioned earlier, about a fantasy. Uh, if you look back at my life, it, 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 we were we were at Arlington, and we've got a lot of we've got a lot of tape I've got to leave on the cutting room floor. Stories we've never told, things we filmed. And I remember at the, at Arlington, I looked at the grave of Roger Chaffin and Gus Grissom, and 
Charlie Bassett and some of my other buddies, I kept asking myself, why me? Why aren't I there and why aren't they here? Uh, I don't know, I don't really have an answer to that question. So fate did play a big part in, in this fantasy I'm talking about. And ended up, the youngest guy to fly flew in Germany, went to the moon on Apollo 10, almost landed but didn't. <laughs> Might have been, but it wasn't. Turned on an opportunity to walk on the moon on Apollo 16. Uh, I talked about that in my book, and my boss thought I was crazy, giving me a chance to go back to the moon, cover the last 47,000 feet, and literally walk on the moon. I wanted more than that. I wanted to prove to myself that I was good enough to command a flight and take on the responsibility of the mission, my crew, and my country, and get the job done. And why me? I don't know why I was selected for that flight. And I, I again said in the book that uh, if I were my boss, I would have selected Dick Gordon's crew who was intact and ready to go. I have no answers to the why me. That's why I call it a fantasy. What I did in my life I shouldn't have done, but I didn't do it alone. I had an awful lot of help. And I think if I have to go back to one reason why I was able to realize my dream that eventually took me and allowed me to call home my home. It's, it's the simplicity of which my dad passed on to me. And, I, and, and Mark, I'm sure your dad passed it on to you. You know, don't be afraid to try. Because if you're afraid, if, if, don't be afraid to fail. If you're afraid to fail, you won't try. If you don't try, you'll never know how good you can be. And just go out and do your best. And remember, whatever you're doing, good is not good enough. I'm an able aviator, and I want to tell you, I saw a lot of guys get killed. You saw them in that film, landed aboard ship. That's because good is not good enough. And for your people, good was never good enough, and that's why we're here today. And I, I want to tell you again, this is an overpowering uh, for me today. I, I watched this movie, and I tried to, I tried to, I tried to think that it was somebody else and not me, and I still liked it. I was like, I really did. And you're, I, I tell you, if your, your, response, your response was so overpowering and, and, and actually unexpected. Oh, I bet a few people have seen a few trailers that said they liked it. But if I leave here tonight with nothing else, or leave, leave London this week with nothing else but a legacy uh, of which this movie is. It's, it's, it's my legacy. It's what I've got to leave the future generation. That all the work we put in and all the early mornings and all the time and all the effort from my point of view, guys, is, is so well worth it. And along the way, I met one hell of a bunch of good guys and good gals. I met a whole hell of a bunch and now have a lot of good friends. And I cannot thank you enough for the effort and the time and everything else you and your entire team put into it. And I thank you again, folks. You had something better to do tonight to come to watch a movie. But thank you, and I appreciate the response. God bless one and all.